Thank you very much. Uh, obviously, to reiterate uh, what's been said throughout the week here, we're, we're thrilled to be here this week and uh, just really excited about the opportunity that we have to to be in the Final Four of uh, uh, of college football is uh, really exciting for, for all of us uh, and uh, just feel really good about the opportunity that we have. Uh, I feel good. Uh, personally, I'm excited to be back. I got in this morning after talking with uh, our trainer, uh, Jeff Allen, about the changes to the SEC protocols. And uh, throughout the time when I was in Tuscaloosa, uh, I've been able to do my job virtually. It's pretty amazing what technology, you guys probably know more about that than me, but uh, every meeting, every practice uh, I was able to be involved with. So it was really, really good uh, back in Tuscaloosa for me, but obviously you know, excited to be here right now. Uh, I think it's really important uh, that we prepare the right way, you know, and basically that's what we've done. Uh, we've worked really hard for this opportunity, uh, really proud of these guys um, and the way they've practiced this coaching staff uh, that I'm associated with, just really proud of everybody's efforts and, and where we are to, to be able to get to this point. This is an outstanding Cincinnati uh, football team and relative to our offense versus their defense, an outstanding defense. I mean, this is a defense that uh, basically is number seven in the – in the country in total defense, uh, number one in pass efficiency, have really, really good uh, against the pass, uh, and, and they do a great job in scoring defense. They're number four in the country in scoring defense. So we, we've got a tall order in front of us. We need to play uh, our best football game of the year uh, offensively in order to, to have a chance in this game. And so we, we're, we're excited about the opportunity. We want to keep preparing here, keep working hard, uh, but we know that uh, you know Friday is going to be a great football game and uh, you know we're going to be ready for it. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Thank you, Coach O'Brien. Again, if you have questions, use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. We'll first go to Aaron Suttles. Aaron, if you'll unmute and go ahead and ask your question. Hey, Bill. Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. I remember during the fall camp, we, we spoke to you about the trust level between you and your quarterbacks and how that's a two-way street. I wonder if you could speak a little bit about your and Bryce's relationship. Obviously, it produced some fantastic results with him winning the Heisman Trophy this year. Yeah, just really proud of Bryce. Um, he's a very special young man. I think you guys know that, um, you, you know, in your interactions with him all year. Uh, and, and for me, you know, relationships with quarterbacks are, are, are really obviously a, a, a big part of, of being um, in the position that I've been in, whether it's at Alabama or the other places I've been. I mean, there has to be a trust. And from day one, you know, when Bryce walked in the office, when I got to Alabama, you know, he had a really good knowledge of, of the offense, which is a testament to last year's coaching staff uh, and also, the, the you know, Mac Jones and, and his ability to mentor Bryce, uh, you know, last year. So Bryce had a good understanding and we started talking about the offense and, um, you know, it was a good relationship right from the start and it developed a, a bond and a, a trust right from the start. And, you know, when you're dealing with a, a quarterback of the talent level, but also the intelligence of Bryce, you know, that trust is easy and, and he's able to be involved in the game plans. And, uh, and it's just been a, a really uh, a great experience for me, uh, one of the best experiences of my career. Next question will be from Tony Salakis. Go ahead, Tony. Hey, Bill, a little off topic, but uh, do you have a relationship with Brian Kelly? And uh, as a former or as a fellow Massachusetts native, uh, what did you think of his accent earlier this month? <laughs> I, I do know Brian. Brian and I went to the same high school. He's a little bit older than me. Uh, we both went to a high school named St. John's Prep up in Danvers, Massachusetts, a uh, Catholic high school outside of Boston. And uh, I, I wish him the best. Uh, you know, he's had a tremendously successful career, and I have a lot of respect for Brian. Our next question will go to Charlie Potter from uh, Bama Online. Go ahead, Charlie. Yeah, hey, Coach, uh, going back to you being in Tuscaloosa, just how weird was it working remotely and, and how big was it to have you know guys on staff like Alex Mortensen and, and some others to be able to kind of step up with you not there in person? Yeah, no, it, was, uh, it wasn't weird uh, only because I've had that experience in the National Football League last year. Everything was Zoomed um, relative to, you know, this has been going on for a couple of years now in our country. And so, um, you know, I had an experience with the Zoom and, and – Really, what what I I think the biggest thing is is that Coach Saban made everything normal. You know, it was like I was actually there, and so I was in every meeting, uh, and then also to our video department, um, Daniel Lyerly and, and Caleb Medema, they did an unbelievable job setting me up every day. And then, like you said, the whole coaching staff, uh, Alex Mortensen, uh, Holman Wiggins, uh, relative to the skill positions, and you know Joe Pendry coming in here was a huge help to us and. Uh, the whole coaching staff, Will Lawing, all those guys that uh, 
uh, you know, graduate assistants and analysts that really do a good job of helping everybody chipped in. And that's the way it's been all year. I mean, the whole year has been a really uh, cool collective effort of this whole coaching staff. It's a very, very strong coaching staff all the way across the board, offense, defense, and special teams. That's a testament to Coach Saban, the type of staff he's able to put together. Next question will go from Mike Rodak. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Bill, it's Mike Rodak with AL.com and also your your rival, St. John Shrewsbury up yeah. in Massachusetts. <laughs> hey, Mike. I uh, just wanted to ask about uh, being at Alabama. You're obviously not front and center as a head coach anymore, but just what's it like having that spotlight on you, just being in a you know major college program and, and calling plays? Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I think that's part of, um, you know, part of these these careers. I mean, you know, when, when you, um, you know, enter into this profession and, you know, you start up and you start to climb the ladder, that's, that's kind of comes with the territory. And so it's, uh, you know, like I've said before, it's not really my first rodeo. I, I, I've been very, very excited about the opportunity. And I've said this uh, to several people around the program. I'm very grateful to Coach Saban. Uh, for this opportunity. It was the only phone call I got last year. And so uh, he, he had a job opportunity for me and, and uh, I couldn't ask for a better opportunity and to work with a bunch of players. Players that we have here have been awesome. Um, the coaching staff just, it's been a, a really, uh, uh, it's just been a, a rewarding year for, for me personally. And next we'll go to Taylor Kaufman. Go ahead, Taylor. <laughs> Hey, Coach, glad to see you're back. I'm with CBS 42 out of Birmingham. Um, just expand a little bit more. You were talking about how um, you guys were able to coach from home, but just talk about the initial, like, we tested positive, and then you saw, you know, the college football playoff policies changed almost, you know, that same day, basically, just because of the spread of Omicron. And so just the initial kind of, okay, it's here, let's contain it, and kind of what, what the conversation was about containing um, COVID and just being thankful that it didn't spread. Yeah, no, I'm very thankful for that. I, I think again, it starts with our our head coach and uh, our medical staff. You know, from day one uh, here at Alabama, you know, even way before I'm talking about the beginning of the season, all the way through, we've been masked up, we've been socially distant, we've um, we've had zooms before this week. So this is not anything. You know, in fact, when I first got here, we were zooming. So you know, a year ago. So, you know, this is something that we're on top of at Alabama. You know, unfortunately, uh, Coach Marone and I tested positive. That's just the way it is. And, and uh, you know, everybody took care of us. We were able to coach virtually. And, you know, I think it's um, it's something that's been really, really emphasized here at Alabama, really from the moment I've stepped in here, is the health and safety of these players, especially in this coaching staff. I think uh, we've been on top of it. And, you know, uh, glad to, you know, see the SEC you know, kind of adjust those rules a little bit. So I was able to get out here today and, and uh, be, be able to be here in person. I feel good. I'm ready to go. And uh, I think the big story is obviously the two teams and the game on Friday. Our next question will come from Jeff Spiegel. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Bill, Jeff Spiegel from uh, WBMA in Birmingham. Uh, we've seen how on the field, how Bryce, you know, handles adversity. Uh, how do you feel he handles success? and the humility that he shows in handling that? You know, I, I, I think that's a great question. I, I've heard uh, that question before from, um, you know, just people in my life. And uh, I've tried to explain to people, uh, my, my, my family, my friends, that, you know, what everybody asks, what's Bryce like? And Bryce is a tremendous young man. He's very smart. He's very poised. He's, he's very humble. Uh, he's a he's a great teammate, and every great quarterback that I've been fortunate to be around has those qualities. Uh, they're all different. They're all they all come in different shapes and sizes and things like that, but they all have those qualities. And and the quality of humility is a tremendous quality that he has. And when he went to the Heisman, when he came back, you know he he made that statement to me that you know look I'm I'm very grateful and very honored to be the Heisman Trophy winner, but you know we have more to do. You know, there's more out there for me to do. He's a, he's a young man that really gets it, uh, and he's practiced really well the last couple of weeks, you know, for a very, very challenging game on Friday against a very good defense, like I said in the beginning. But uh, can't, can't emphasize enough um, the special qualities that Bryce has. Next, we'll go to Ralph Russo of the Associated Press. Go ahead, Ralph. Hey, Bill. Good to see you. I'm glad you're feeling well. Hey, Ralph. Uh, so a couple of things. Uh, related one what was it like to work with your your buddy doug this year i know you guys go a long way back and the other part of it is i i guess the obvious question is 
you've worked for the Patriots and Belichick and Saban in Alabama now and, and what similarities, differences, you know, where do you see maybe some overlap in, in the two programs? It's been good to work with Doug again. Ralph, you know, Doug and I go way back. Um, I think mo- most everybody kind of knows that story, you know, even though he's a Yankee fan and I'm a Red Sox fan, we still have uh, kept our friendship the last many, many years. Um, so it's been good. He's a great football coach and, and an even better friend, and uh, it's been good to, to work with him, just like I said, the rest of the staff. Um, you know, relative to, uh, I think, your second question. Give me the second question again, Ralph. It was a comparison with the Patriots. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, everybody asked me that. Yeah, there, there, look, there's – obviously when you're work, when, – and I say this to everybody, I, I, I take a lot of pride in working for uh, two of the greatest coaches of all time in any sport. Uh, Coach Belichick, Coach Saban, uh, I've learned so much from from both of them. Um, and, you know, there's some fundamentals that they both believe in, hard work, trust, loyalty, uh, you know, smart football teams, uh, teams that play selfless, complimentary football. Uh, they both believe in that. And then, you know, obviously they're both two different people. And uh, I respect the hell out of both of them, and, uh, and I'm grateful for the opportunity that I've had. Not many people can say – I think there's you can count on one hand how many people can say they've worked for both guys, and I'm I'm just extremely proud of that. Next, we'll go to Michael Casagrande. Go ahead, Michael. Hey, hey Bill. Uh, just wondering, what was the most challenging moment maybe of this season, and how did you adjust to working for a demanding head coach like Nick Saban? I think the most challenging thing for me was, you know, when I came in here uh, learning this offense, you know, and I had a lot of people help me, um, people that were here before, uh, guys on the coaching staff, uh, obviously Bryce, um, I've said before, Mac Jones, when he was working out for the draft, helped me a little bit, which was great. Um, So I really thankful to those people. That was the most challenging thing because I had been involved with an offense for 10 to 15 years, whatever it was, uh, this similar offense. And then, but when you come here, you know, you're running Alabama's offense. You're not bringing your offense in here. And it's a great offense with a great history. And it was really awesome to learn it, but it was very challenging. And uh, and then, uh, you know, relative to uh, working for a, a great head football coach, I mean, that's kind of like when you're coming up and coaching. I mean, these, these are these are uh, opportunities that you cannot pass up. You, you, you have to jump at an opportunity to work and learn from somebody that uh, will go down as one of the best of all time. Next, we'll go to John Talty. John, go ahead. Hey, Bill. Uh, what do you feel like was maybe the reason or the thing that helped the offensive line click against Georgia? And I guess kind of related to that, like how do you build off that momentum, um, you know, kind of leading into this game against Cincinnati? Yeah, you know, the offensive line, you know, over the year um, has learned and, and grown together. Um, you know, we lost – some experience off that line from last year. And, and, you know, we had some guys playing for the first time and they learned and they grew together and they got better every week. And, you know, give credit to many of the defenses that we played. You know, we, we, we played against some really good defenses that, that had some good game plans coming in. But in the end, you know, we, we, were, able to, uh, we were able to come out w- victorious in most of our games, which is a credit to our offensive line and everybody else on offense, coaching staff, the whole thing. So, you know, I think that, you know, we, we, we came out of the Auburn game. We made some adjustments. Um, we knew what we had to do to get fixed. And then we studied Georgia, and we tried to do as good a job as we could. And, and now we, we've moved on to, to uh, you know, obviously Cincinnati. So it's one game at a time, and, and we've been working real hard on Cincinnati. And hopefully, you know, we'll coach and play well on Friday. We have time for two more. We'll start with Nick Kelly of the Tuscaloosa News. Go ahead, Nick. Hey, Bill, uh, with John Mitchie uh, being out with the ACL injury, um, who are some of the young guys you've seen step up at receiver? Yeah, when you, you lose a guy like Metch, it's, you know, it's not easy. Metch, um, you know, he's a 100-catch guy. He's just a, he can do so many different things for us, and he's just a great guy. So his presence in the room is missed and all those things. But, you know, when those things happen in football, it does give opportunities to other guys, you know, guys like Ja'Cory Brooks, JoJo Earl, um, you know, I think that those guys have stepped up. I've, I've seen improvement from a Jai Hall. I've, I've seen improvement from a lot of different guys. And then you have your your guys that you know are dependable and trustworthy that are going to be there, the veterans, the uh, Jamison Williams and the Slade Boldens, you know, Cam Latu, Jaleel Billingsley's had a good couple weeks. So, you know, we're, we're excited about, like I said, the opportunity and, 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 and really the guys that, that, you know, have some opportunities that maybe they haven't had all year. Well, you know, hopefully they'll be able to step up and make some plays on Friday. We'll take one final question from Ivan Mazel. Go ahead, Ivan. 
Hey, Bill. Hey, uh, Ivan. How, now that you've been through a season, how have the kids changed since you were in college ball and how has the game changed since you were in college ball? Yeah, that's a, I mean, you know, it's been, you know, almost 10 years since I was at Penn state. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's changed a lot, you know, the, the, but I, I'll say this about the players, the players are players. I mean, if they, they, they love football, they work hard, you know, maybe they look at their phones a little bit more than maybe they used to. Um, but that's the world we live in the social media world. Um, you know, I, I just think that the guys at Alabama, I'm, I'm really proud to, to say that I'm their coach because they put a lot on the line, meaning they work very hard. They they love football. They're really good teammates. Uh, it's been a, a great experience. I think the game has changed, Ivan, you know, from especially when I was in the Big Ten to being in the SEC. Um, you know, the game is more of a spread game. You know, I think that's kind of obvious over the years with the different offensive uh, numbers that have been put up over the years. And so, um, you know, we had to – Alabama, obviously, before I got here, adapted to that and has done a great job. And hopefully, you know, we can continue to improve and, and have a good showing on Friday. Medical Properties Trust, at the very heart of healthcare. care.